Hello YouTube, it's Gorman here with another Loyal Project tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about the Alchemy AHDSR envelopes or the Alchemy envelope parameters for short as I want to refer it from now on. As usual, if this is the first video that you see in my channel and you like it or dislike it, I invite you to do your stand like or dislike this video. If you actually liked it and you want to keep up to date with what else I'm doing, then you can subscribe, hit that subscribe button at the bottom of the page and keep up to date with all my stuff. As usual, I want to thank all the new subscribers that keep popping up, that keep supporting me. Always appreciative of your efforts, of your communication, your criticism, etc., etc. And just to try to keep this video short, I'm gonna jump right into the Logic Pro X window. In the last video, I talked about LFO, which are all these parameters. I wanna make a little disclaimer. I'm gonna do the same thing here in the HDSR control pattern parameters. I'm not gonna be doing a lot of tweaking and listening because I wanna leave that when I cover all of these guys. If you have not seen some of the other videos that have been carrying on in this series for alchemy i invite you to do so if you also want to see some of the other videos that i have covered for the different sense in logic that's also going to be helpful is the first time you're seeing this because guess what this is something that i have covered before in a different way but the ahdsr module is going to provide an envelope for those of you that have been following me or are familiar with modulation, you're gonna know that because you're gonna see these knobs down here and this is just an envelope shape, right? That it's being shaped with these knobs and those letters correspond to those knobs. So it's attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. If you don't know what those are, I We'll do some explaining when I get to the knobs, but I invite you to, again, watch some of my old videos so you really understand it as I explain it in more detail. I'm gonna be a little bit, I'm gonna be assuming that you at least know some of this and try to jump through a little bit quicker just to make this video more shorter and more straight to the point. Now, the envelope display right here is going to show a graph of the envelope generator output so again whatever you end up doing here is going to be reflected here one thing that it's a little bit important in my view to say is that your a h d and r parameters can be set independently then the S here, the sustain, it's gonna be maintained until a mid node enters its node off stage or when that node off message is received from the MIDI. When you release a note, then your sustain is gonna turn off. And I think that's obvious, but I wanted to explain and just to not to leave it uh, hanging there. Obviously, if you press a node and you leave it pressed, it's gonna sustain that uh, that node, uh, that sound being produced. If you release it, then boom, it's over. So that I just want to make that clarification there real quick. You can set different values here, but you can also you see this hand. You can also shape everything by moving around uh, on the curve and moving the points and then introducing all the points right because if you are let's see if you're doing some of this right or you can use the hand and, and, and do it however you see fit that's a way of doing it some people are more visual that's why this is here again not different from other synths you can do this in other synths as well it's just that alchemy takes it a little bit step further because you have a lot of other parameters that you can use as triggers or knobs that you can where you can trigger all that you're doing here in your envelope 
So with that, with that being said, then just let me just cover these guys here. From the LFO video, you're gonna notice that there's some things that repeat and they act in the same way. So I'm gonna blow through them a little bit faster. The first thing that we have this pop-up is your current envelope pop-up menu. So I already have two in this example. You can have up to 16. Same as that with LFO, same as with everything, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm getting a little bit ahead here. You can always go to the show target and go to the applicable modulation parameter and you can see how many you have. So there's two envelopes. One is tied to the master volume in this case and then a there's an envelope number two that's tied to the volume of source b another one to the source volume the source c volume and another one that's to filter number two and so on and so forth you can you can keep doing that as you go this file button does the same thing there's a, a bunch of presets that you can select it tells you its name is pretty descriptive and you can use them as is or you can use them just as a baseline. You can save those, it's gonna be saved into the appropriate folder in, in your computer that's tied to Alchemy and it's tied to the envelope. You can also copy any tweaks, you can paste them, you can clear or you can randomize and create different things. I'm just gonna randomize, you see there's a and every time I hit randomize, I'm going to get a different set, which is also good for learning and experimenting a little bit. You can start with a preset and then randomize it, get a different result, save it, have it ready in your presets for later, copy it, etc. etc. The trigger button is going to act the same way as in the LFO, in which when you turn on this button, you're going to be re-triggering the envelope in this case. So the envelope parameters or the envelope effect is going to start from zero again every time you press a note. When the button is off, then the envelope triggers for the first note only and then continues its progress for different nodes. So it's not going to restart. But very simple to understand in my view. The envelope is only going to re-trigger for nodes that are received after all other nodes have been released. And that's when the trigger mode is off. You have a sync button. Same thing. It's going to be on. Then it's going to synchronize that to your tempo, to different beats and sub beats, bars, etc., etc. If it's off, then the envelope stage will have different times or its timing it's gonna be free to vary however it goes in time as opposed to being in sync with your tempo same as the lfo nothing different now what i want you to note is that see how this um, metric here it's like a uh, it's kind of um, like a ruler of sorts. So when the sync is off, it's just gonna show you from zero to something here. And I think this is in seconds. And when it's on, then it's gonna draw this bars. And that means that you can align it to the different uh, bar ranges. So it starts obviously at zero and you can then sync it with the different beats nothing too complicated there now again the envelope displays right here it's just a product of your parameters from the knobs below or you can do that in real time as you use this more and you are familiar with what a certain shape for your envelope does then you're probably going to feel more comfortable just drawing something out here and then fine tuning using your ear obviously as well and then getting the exact result that you want but anyway now let me explain some of these guys here to start closing the video the attack knob it's gonna set the time that's required to reach 
the highest level of amplitude when a note is played. That's an attack. So again, in simpler terms, how much is going to take for the note to reach its output after you have pressed the note on your keyboard? It's going to be adjustable in seconds from 0 to 20. That's also true for all of these guys here. That's also similar to the LFO, where the delay and the attack have the same seconds range. The hold knob determines the time that that peak amplitude or that highest level is going to be held before you enter the decay when it starts to die. So when you press the note, you have a certain time to reach the peak. The hole is going to determine how much is going to stay there. So you can see kind of here like something graphically, right? It's going to take this much to get there. So it's in seconds, right? From zero to one. Stays there for this few and then starts to die out. That's what the hold knob is going to do. It's going to tell you how much that level of the volume if you want to think about it that way, stays after you have pressed node. Decay is just going to set the time for that level to start dying. So it starts to fall off. That's the fall off point. Your sustain knob is going to set the envelope sustain level as a percentage of that level that you have reached, that, that peak, that top of the sound. This one is actually set in percentage. So you have this four that are in seconds. This one is in a percentage. That's why this one is kind of independent from all of these guys here. But see how that um, reacts there. That point would be that guy. So it's the fourth point in my envelope shape. That's an also another hint, right? Each each point, it's each of the knobs. So that's going to tell you what you want to do. You can sustain it further here. You can hold that peak level, sustain, and then from there, it's definitely going to die into the release phase. And that's for what we have the release knob. The release knob is going to set the time that's required for the signal to fall from the sustain to zero. And obviously that all happens after you have released a key. So all of this stuff, or may I should say attack, hold, sustain, those guys are really tied to when you're pressing the note. Your decay will start immediately after you have released your node. And then you enter that release phase but the release is going to be tied to how long you're sustaining it. So release is going to take you down to zero. And obviously you can make this, um, you can make it this last a little bit longer or shorter, but it's always going to bring that amplitude, that peak, that level, that volume down to zero from the note. Nothing too complicated, I think, in, in my view, but uh, for those for the benefit of those that haven't seen my other videos or are not familiar with modulation and envelopes, I wanted just to give that explanation one more time. As a quick tip, just to finish here, whenever possible, try to use the minimum required envelope release times so that you reduce the voice overlapping and help your CPU load. As with everything, the more uh, you go crazy with some of these parameters and, and, and tweaking and so on and so forth, creating probably the same result that you can with less tweaks, that's going to take a toll on the CPU. I just wanted to mention that again for those that are watching one of my videos for the first time. But in essence, Alchemy is very powerful. Use it wisely, okay? With that, I'm going to leave you for this video. In the next one, we're going to keep going through the control panel. The term will be for MSEG. 
Thanks for the support as usual. Peace out, YouTube.